Oh, Das, we are under 48 hours away from Katy Perry singing Raw and the first bounce of the AFL Grand Final. Jev, cannot wait. I happen to get tickets with you, so I will be there. Jev, this pod is a little two-parter. The first one, we actually go through the multi. We go through our best first goal scorers and our Norm Smith. And the second part? We get the other part of the chat with Joey Montagna. We talk a bit more stuff of footy going into next year. What's going on? Some funny St Kilda stories. It's actually a great chat, the second part. At the end of yours and my section, Das, we do a little talk on what Joey told us off camera, so tune in for that. Up the potty, up the showies. See, See you on, on Saturday, Das. Let's go. See you on the roast. Welcome back to a very special edition of the 100K Pod. This is essentially our grand final show, Jeb. We're going to go a bit of a Sunday roast style. Uh, we're going to put on the 100K multi, just me and you, Jeb. It's the final one. We've got one more game to bet on. We're going to put on the multi within one game. Norm Smith, first goal. We're going to do the works, Jeb. Good to be back. How are you, my good friend? Oh, we are not long now to the show. He's put on the performance of the year and win the flag, Dars. I'm excited. So the... the uh the grand final multi, it's a bit of a hard one to ask because sports bet only let you get to $2,500 of a max bet. So we have to put 40 bucks on it for the integrity of the pod. And we know it's a bit of a donation. It's bloody hard to turn it win 100K, 100K on grand final day, but we're going to have a crack. We're going to put 40. We suggest you guys just put five or 10 on it like you always do. Um, but we're going to do it a You'll see. We're going to go leg for leg. I'm going to do swan's leg. You're going to do lion's leg. We're going to go leg for leg. We're going to do it a little bit different. We're going to take a few risks, a few over-unders, so it's not, you know, 40 legs and we need Isaac 25 and a goal and Chad 25 and a goal. We're going to do it a little bit different. So I'm excited to see yep. the legs you put in. I'm going to build the multi as we go. And, uh, yeah, I'm pumped ass. Yeah, just give us updates as we go through. So usually when we do the multis, guys, we usually bounce off each other like before – we come on air. I honestly have no idea what Jeb's going to put on. He's got no idea what I'm going to put on. As we said, if we're usually constructing a normal multi, might put a little bit more thought into it. Like, hey, we've got one game to bet on. If you like a leg, it's going in tonight. All right, let's go. How are we kicking her off? Righto, Das. So to win 100K, yep. we're going to have to take a few risks. Mm-hmm. We'll start with two legs, two swans legs. Yep. The first leg is Brody Grundy anytime. At six dollars, six yep. to one, the value is just too good. So he's going to be the best ruckman on the field now that Oscar McInerney's gone injured. If they put Darcy Ford on him, he's going to take Darcy Ford forward and test him. And if Joe Danaher's going up against him, the same thing. I tell you where the Swans don't want. Well, the Swans want Joe Danaher, and the Lions don't want him in the Swans forward line. I reckon Brody's going to get his chance. How often can you just see, you know, a ruckman gets a too high free kick or a soft free kick or just floats down and takes a nice mark? I think six to one when we're trying to win a hundred grand is just great value. So the first leg is going to be Brody Grundy anytime. Six to one to get us going, to get us with some legs. Then I'm going to give one more as well. And it's James Jordan anytime at four to one. Four bucks for James Jordan. He's probably going to go straight to Dane Zorko, and he's going to put the clamps on Dane Zorko. And we know players can kick goals on Dane Zorko the other day, uh, the other way. James Peatling in the first final kicked two in a minute on him. Yeah. I, I know, I think Grime Myers was doing a bit of a job on him. Close was having a look at him. They were all sort of having a go at him last week. They let him run way too loose early, and then they clamped up a bit. James Jordan's not going to let him have that influence, and he's a hard worker, Jimmy Jordan. He will get him the other way. So he's 4-1. to one. Brody Grundy, 6-1. to one. So just kicking us off straight away. That multi pays 23.50 to 1 for those first two legs. We're away. You know, let's go, Das. What is your first leg? I think this is an absolute lock. So had this man in the sweep last year, Jev, and boy, did this almost come through in spades. So I'm taking a line bet here. I just think this is the smart play with Oscar McInerney out. Joe Danaher is going to have to play a little bit more up the ground. I'm going to be taking his over, Jev, for disposals. Disposals. Have a guess what it is. Uh, Guess off the top of my head will be like 14 and a half. 14 and a half, Jev. We're getting a dollar ninety for fourteen and a half. So I love last it, year, last year in the grand final, three goals, one, sixteen disposals, which is a big one. He's averaging two goals, one, fifteen touches on the year. 
So I just think with McInerney out from the start, he's going to have to pinch it with Darcy Ford a little bit more. A dollar ninety, Jeb. I think this is juicy. And for all my Joe Danaher fans out there, the Joe Danaher experience for twenty touches, Jeb, off the top of your head. So fifteen's a dollar eighty-seven. What do you reckon he might be for twenty touches? Oh, five like extra touches. That'd be like two fifty, maybe five twenty-five. Oh, geez, I like the sound of that. <laughs> am, am I stupid for thinking that? 525 jeez, for 20? That's such a good singles bet, isn't it? Isn't it? It's such a good singles bet. All right, Darcy, next leg. He had an all, he's the only player for the Swans that had a great 2022 grand final. Oh, that was Chad good. Warner. He had 25 and kicked two. Darcy's line's 22 and a half. I'm almost positive they're going to Isaac Heaney. They're not going to let Isaac Heaney. Just dominate him. He, he's, they're not going to let him have a 30 and 3 game or 25 and 2. They might put a bit of work into Errol as well. I reckon Chad's going to run a bit free. I think 22 and a half. I absolutely love that line. Me and yep. Morgs were there last week. I reckon they I reckon not managed him. He just sat in the bench way more than I'm sort of used to watching Chad. I reckon he's going to be ready to play four full hard quarters. He's missed a second half when he's around the ball. So we're going to take Chad for 22 and over 22 and a half and one goal. Yep. Ch- uh, let me just put the goal in. Why so we've not? got Chad for 22 and a half. So I know it feels like I'm taking a lot of Swans goals, but I just want to remind everyone, we kicked 14 goals last week, 95 points. We, took, we kicked 13 goals against GWS and we kicked 12 goals the last time we played Brisbane. So like I've just taken three single goal scorers. You know, we have to kick 12 goals. We know there's a couple of swans that are going to kick them. So, yeah, that's that's my first couple of legs. Das, what have you got? Yes, I'm going to be taking the man of the moment, Jeff, Cam Rayner. Not for one, but I'm taking him for two. Let's go. I just think confidence is sky high. He's come in. His price has come in um, for Norm Smith. I think he'll, he'll be the most bet person for the Norm Smith just because his price is around $34. Like it's it's too high not to. So I feel like so for one goal is a dollar thirty nine, Jeb. Yeah. Two goals is two ninety five. Yeah, that's that is great value. They have that a dollar thirty nine and then three bucks. But I for a forward, so for a I forward just forward to kick a second. I I think he kicks one in the first quarter, and then essentially you just need him for one more for the game. No, it's so a great he's call. Kick, he's, he's kick one early. So with this multi, Jeb, I feel because you started really well. We don't just need a stack of million legs that are a dollar twenty. If the value is there, let's put it. Like Cam Rain at two goals, perfect day. MCG played there last week, kicked two in a minute, or oh, two, two in the second half. I, I just two ninety five. It's too yeah. much. No, it's I love too it. Much. I absolutely love it, Dars. Righto, so Dars, I'm thinking, I'm, th- I'm, I'm thinking of leaving Tom Papley out of this multi. Oh, I reckon no. Brandon Stasevich's job is going to be to not let Tom Papley have a kick, right? I think if you believe in Tom Papley, you take him for four and the Norm Smith. But I can see him either kicking four, winning Norm, or having a dog of a day. But it leaves it open for two other swans, and one of them is Will Haywood. He had a quiet prelim. He missed an easy shot. I reckon he is the sixth forward the Lions are going to really worry about. I'm going to take Will Haywood to kick two goals for the Swans at $2.20, Das. We're nearly there. We're seven there, legs in. There is so much value here, Jeb. I'm like, I'm not going to be taking this, man, but I just want to go through. If Will Ashcroft is to kick a goal, Jeb, it's four dollars ten. Zorko's four ten if he pushes forward. Lockie Neal's three forty five. I don't know why they've inflated these prices, but it's so much value. I will take this man because I know Morgs loves him. The sneeze, Calamarchi, Jeb, just for one, just for one. He's a deep forward, a dollar fifty five. I think he'll get his chances, Jeb. He'll go forward. He'll come up with one. That's so eight legs, and we're at a thousand to one already. So now I'm going to go some short disposals. I'm just going to go Isaac for 20. Just 20 touches to us. He's in all-time form. I know they're going to put the clamps on him. Barry's going to go to him. It, I'm cool. not worried cool about him not getting I'm not worried about him getting under 20. And if it's not working, you know he's going to go forward. He's going to pop up, kick a goal. We're just going to take Isaac for 20. Who you got? Me, I'm taking Hugh McCluggage for 20, Jeff. He just 
Like his his last five games, he's had 26, 29, 24, 24, and 27. He seems to be running a lot around near the footy and getting his hands on it. Remember the middle stage of the year, he was like just playing like a, a deeper wing and just wouldn't get near it. He's playing a lot for those midfield minutes. He's pushing back, starting in the contest, coming forward. His last two against the Swans as well, Jeff, 26, 28. Just taking him for 20 at $1.17. It's perfect conditions, Jeff. I just think... We're not going too out of the box with any of these. It's just like if they do their job, it's going to get done. So I just think that's a lock, McCluggage, for 20. So all those legs are in Darth. I reckon sports better go on a bit soft. So it used to be a $2,500 was the max of same game multi. Some folks must have won them because now it's only fifteen fifty is your max on the same, same game, game multi odds booster, which I'm just a bit disappointed in. So we're going to have... 32 bucks 50 on this to just only win 50k. We're not going to be the 100k because we'd have to have 60 bucks on it. Feels like a bit of a donation. Like we've we're giving it a chance, but 100% we are. We we try to turn 10 into 100k. 32 is enough. This is our bet, Das. Tell me the losing leg. Brody Grundy to kick a snag. James Jordan to kick a snag. Joe yep. Danaher over 14 and a half. Chad Warner over 22 and a half. Chad Warner for a goal. Callum Archie anytime. Cam Rayner to kick two. Will Haywood two. Isaac Heaney 20. Hugh McCluggage 20. That's a fucking nice bet, Jeff. I love it. That is such a nice bet. Wait till wait till Grundy kicks one early. Cam Rayner kicks one early. If as long as we get three goal scorers in the first quarter correct, we're on. Absolutely. Like, absolutely. absolutely. All right. First goal scorers. We well, let's have let's have two each. Yeah, who you think's going to kick it, and then your dark horse. We'll just have a couple of bucks on these. Your first goal scorer, Das, who are you leaning? My first goal scorer, let's go Kai Lohman. Kai Lohman. I absolutely love it. Why do you think he's going to kick the first? Will he not get the matchup? Uh, one just might come in, he'll pop up out of a sprinkler, kick one goal three last week, miss some chances, confidence player. I don't know. Just, you can see it. I, lo- I love the theory, though. I You just say... Dacos kicked the first last year, yeah? Yeah. You can see Heaney just... Oh, if he kicks the first... Yeah, that's all. You can feel the commentary, like... You will see me. Season. You know you what I mean? Like, sure. Oh, you know what I mean? Form. I'm going to take one of the two big men. I don't know who to take. A Marty or McDonald. I reckon Das, with McDonald's bad ankle, he's going to tag Harris Andrews like Billy Frampton did last year. He's not going to leave his side. And then there's going to be one. Harris Andrews is going to back himself in the air. And either Amadi, like he's going to miss the cues. Amadi will get a little hit up. Or one will come off Harris Andrews' hands, land in Amadi's pocket. Uh, not Amadi, McDonald, sorry. Land in McDonald's pocket. And he'll just kick a quick snap for the first. So I'm going to go McDonald as my my best bet. And then yep. who is a bit of a roughy? Is it Heaney? Yeah. Or Chad. Oh, they're 15 and 16. I'll give you Isaac. And then my Ruffy Das, it has to be Brody Grundy. I'm, I'm all in at this stage. I'm getting What's 41 to 1 for Brody Grundy. I'm getting 41 to 1 for James Jordan as well. You know, I think they're kicking a snag. I absolutely love them both to kick one. So a bet that Morgs loved as well. He loved Blakey for first goal. Um, if you want to juice up your multi, Jev, because I just think this is a lock. But I think Tom Papley's kicking a goal in the first quarter. Ooh, what does that pay? Two seventy-five. That's nice. What about Josh Dunkley or Jared Berry to kick the first forty-one to one? They tackle Isaac Heaney holding the ball in the forward fifty. He gets a stiff one, like a, he like you know it gets he gets caught in and they pay it and they pin him and it, you know a tagger's dream is kicking a first goal, mm. getting into him. You know, can you see that happening? Yeah, you got. I, I can see. I can. Oh. You can I picture everything. Heaney or Warner just bursting oh. through the middle. The you get the half forwards to pull back off the stoppage, so they're not right in. So you just back yourself to win the first center clearance, and whoever gets it out can run and have a bounce and actually have a shot from fifty. It's going to be so interesting, right? Nah. Let's go to Norm Smith. We just had a dollar on a few of those, just so we've got them. Let's go to Norm Smith. So let's go to Morgs' Norm Smith first. He loves. Nick, the Lizard Blakey for the norm. What did he say here? He just loves the Liz. He just loves the Liz. So do I. I was singing Liz today. I'm like, 
you know, Brisbane, they're coming in, they're coming in buggered. They might need a legit put Berry onto Chad, Dunkley onto Heaney, um, someone onto Errol. And it's like then Liz is our next All Australian. He's an absolute superstar. If you don't put any time into him, he's third man up. He can mark it and he can absolutely kill you through the corridor. I love that from Morgs. So Morgs likes to Liz. Who is your we'll go we'll go your favorite to win it and then the dark horse? Who is your favorite? Oh, my favorite. Jeez, Cameron is coming, Jeff. I got him at 34s the other day. He's in yeah, the he, he seems the popular pick, doesn't he? Yep. Um, we loved Ashcroft the other night. Yeah, i I think I'll I think I'll go Will Ashcroft, Jeff. Yep. Young kid. That you probably won't get as much of attention as the other guys. You can only you can only give so much attention. Like you're gonna go to Neil. Fuck. Oh, you can just see him having a. You know he had a pretty quiet game last year, but he's carrying a bit of an injury cloud. But you think he's gonna have a big game, but you're like maybe he's just a bit underdone. And he just tried does the decoy almost like what Sam Mitchell did. He's like, yeah, for the betterment of the team, and just let Ashcroft go nuts. So I oh, know if he kicks a goal because he stands out. So. I'm going to go him 23 to 1. Um, I'm heavily invested in Heaney already. But the more and more I think about it, the more and more I just like Chad to win the Norm Smith. I just think if you're Brisbane, it's don't let Isaac Heaney beat us. Imagine he has another 30 and 3 and they win by four goals. Like Chris Fagan will be kicking himself. Mm-hmm. He, 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 It's just the obvious pick. He's an absolute... He's in all-time form right now. You can't get done by him. You ha- someone has to finally put the clamps on him. And I, and even if it is Barry, I still think Heaney might go forward and kick one or two and still get involved. Might be a 20-2 and two game. But I reckon Chad is just primed and just he loves the space at the MCG. I saw him do a 2022 grand final. I just reckon he is just such a good bet on the board. Chad at 8-1. to one. I'm liking who's your ruffy? Who's someone a bit left to center? Like the last two Norm Smith stars, Bobby Hill was it was either fifty to one or a hundred to one last year. And yep. who was before that? Isaac Smith was fifty to one or a hundred to one. They said on SEN today. Yeah, Bobby Hill was a hundred to one. Isaac Smith was fifty to one. Who's your left to center? I love this pick, Jev. Luke Parker. You reckon he can kick four or five? I reckon he can kick three or four. And just absolutely dominate. He's another one as well for a first half goal. I had him in the sweep. Almost every time the Swans play, I reckon I've had it. He kicks a goal, either kicks the first or he definitely has a shot to kick the first. I just think big game. It might not be decided by your tools, but like he's shown, what did he win? He won probably three Brett Kirk medals before Goulden did. Yeah, he did. And he had that game, that one game round one, two years ago. He kicked five goals in it. Like he can just, he's... He's experienced. He's seen everything. He's not afraid. He get he just finds space, and he just uh, he's a great set shot as well. So, Luke Parker is a genuine roughy at forty one to one. Bit of experience. Would he retire? No, no. Nah, North are throwing him too much money. Dust. Do you remember? Well, I obviously remember. Ryan O'Keefe won the Norm Smith tackling Sam Mitchell sixteen times in a game. He just went to Sam Mitchell. He tackled him. He had sixteen tackles. He won the Norm Smith. Can you see James Rowbottom tackling Lockie Neal 16 times and just stopping all the Brisbane Lions ball movement, kicking a goal of his own against 67 to 1 for um, James right. Rowbottom? And the other one, Dan Hanabry tipped it on the radio today, and I can see him kicking four, and that is Will Haywood. I can see him popping up for four. He's a moments man. He always plays well in big games. We moments were there Haywood. against Melbourne when he kicked the first. I can just, I can see it happening. He's also. 60, he's 67 to 1 as well. There's so much of that. Honestly, for this grand final, Jeff, looking at these goals and looking at the over-unders, like there's never been more value in a game with yeah. so many good players. I hope we look back on this. Say the Swans get the result, but it's like 15 goals to 14 goals. It's 24 and sunny. They're just going goal for goal. Touches, everything. Oh, dust. Uh, Sportsbet have given us a $20 bonus bet today. Yes. It's going to be goal kickers only. How many does Joe Danaher kick? Two. Two. Charlie Cameron? One. I agree. One. Tom Papley? Two. Two. You're allowed to say zero as well. Yeah. Joel Amati? 
I'll go zero. I'll be safe. I think he kicks one, but I'll go zero. I reckon he kicks one. We'll leave Will Hayward out because he's in the 100K. Logan McDonald. Let's go zero. Yep. I'm too I'm worried happy. about his ankle being yep. not that good. Isaac Heaney. One. Oh, geez. I love two. I agree. Eric Hip Thrush. Nah. No, I don't want him to watch. Chad, we've got him in the 100k. We'll leave him. Cam Rain, we've got him in the 100k. We'll leave him. Kyle Loman, he kicks one. Yeah. Zach Bailey? Yes. One. Logan yeah, Morris? Uh, probably, but I don't want him in. Leave him out. Luke Parker, he kicks one. Yep. We're getting 350 for two here, Dars. Jeez, I like it. Nah, just one. $1.50 is great. Calamar Chi, we've already got him for one. But now we're getting a bit. That, that pace, that eight legger. Danaher two, Cameron one, Papley two, Amadi one, Heaney one, Loman one, Bailey and Parker. We're getting twenty five to one for that. For that dust, we got a twenty dollar bonus bet. Yeah, just put that on. That That's gets it. back five hundred bucks. That's perfect. That's the perfect bet. That is on. I'll, I will put that one on my feed for yeah. everyone uh, listening that listens to this. Um, I'll put that on my personal account now because I absolutely love it as well. And we'll chuck that on the feed so we can, you can get on it with me. Yeah, 100K will be sent out. Oh, I'm so excited, Das. I'm so excited. So we're going to the parade tomorrow. We haven't discussed this. I had a look. It starts at like 10. Does it? All right. We'll have to get up early. Get to the parade. Film a bit of crap. Train in? Train in. Drive. I don't know. Where is it? Near the G. It's like three different spots. I'll show you the map. All right. <laughs> We'll sort that out. Yeah, we'll sort oh, that I'm out. So pumped. So keep listening. We're about to put our second half uh, of the chat with Joey. That's actually really cool. So we stopped talking about what's happening in the footy now. We started talking about what the future of the footy looks like and what teams are going to go up and down. Joey gives some good stuff. I wish we could tell you some of the stuff he told us off camera. Actually, oh. let's just give a couple, Darth. He was saying something about, and I know you won't want to hear this. Jacob Wiedering was a little filthy at the Blues. Mm. So there's a little rumor. Charlie Kerno played in that Hawthorne game when he shouldn't have played because he wanted to win the Coleman. And then he got injured that Hawthorne game and they never saw him again that season. He never got up to play again. His ankle was stuffed and it cost him, I'm not saying it cost him a flag. I don't think they were good, or, good enough to win a flag, but it cost him going on a run in the finals because he was too worried about winning the Coleman. And then Jacob Wiedering's a little filthy at him for being a bit selfish over the team. Little murmur that Joey heard that he told us off camera. That is unbelievable to us. And also the um, the mind of Joey, how he uh, fleeced the pies. So I don't know if it's – I'm going to have to re-watch the second half with you because Morg has been editing it. But I, I say to Joey, I don't know if it's going to make. I think North are going to finish higher than Collingwood next year. I don't, I don't think it's in the pod. I think we spoke about it after. Right. So Joey agrees with me and he goes. He loved it. He was a part of the Lockie Schultz trade and he looked at Collingwood's list and all their plus 30-year-olds and he goes, he could see them missing the finals next year after they won the flag. But he, got, he said, I don't say that on TV because the Collingwood supporters just come for me. He goes, I just can't be fucked dealing so with it. So I just four. say they're going to finish top four like everyone else does. But he could see the fall off coming. So that's why for Lockie Schultz, they put in a future first. And now they've got whatever, pick seven coming to the bloody Docker. So nine, nine, I think. Pick nine coming to the Docker. So he's wrapped with that call. But he doesn't say all this stuff on TV because Collingwood supporters just whinge and moan. It's good. Like... The, the amount of stuff him and Kingy have a team of the year. They've got a special <laughs> team of the year. There's some good stuff there. I wish he could tell you. But, yeah, it's a great chat. Um, we're definitely looking to get him on at the start of the season next year. He really wants to do a bit of a preview show with some hot takes. He's like, come in. He's like, I can't swing from the hip too much. You boys can. But we'll have a bit of a bit of a first take type set up for the start of the season. But give it a listen. Let us know. Um, and anyone else that you guys would like us to try and get in the off season. We pretty much got a lot more free time now, and so do a lot of these, uh, I know, reporters, uh, analysts, players, and stuff. So if we can get our hands on any, or if anyone would know someone that they'd like us to chat to, give us a yell. Um, we've pretty much got free time, so we'd love to have a chat with yeah, anyone. Yeah, and if you if you mate to the player or anything, send him our way. We love talking to him. We'll come and meet him, whatever it is. So good pod, Dars. Calm the bloods. I'll see you Saturday. We're both Go going. We both got tickets. Go I cannot wait. Go the bloods. 
All right, guys, welcome back. We are here with Joey Montagna. Thank you so much for joining us. We are here for the finals ramble. We're obviously massive fans. We've spoken to Kingy. We got Tom Morris early in the year. We understand you're super busy, especially this time of year, so we really appreciate it, mate. We're going to get you warmed up, so we've got a little quick fire yes or no question, so we're just going to shoot. You have to say either yes or no. Right, hey. North Melbourne are a bottom four side in 2025. No. Ooh. Zach Merritt is a saint. No, unfortunately. Finn Callahan is a saint. Yes. Wow. The Hawks miss the eight. No. Carlton make the top four. Yes. No. Good man. No way. Yes. I had them to miss the eight this year. It's 76 to one. Oh, really? And they just, and Freo decided to lose. Wow. It was the best bet of ah. Thursday night footy, for the love of God, is permanent. Yes, absolutely. Has to be. Yeah. St Kilda have a midfield next year. Nah, not next year. <laughs> no. Ken Hinckley is the coach of Port Adelaide for the whole season. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, yes. And wildcard weekend. Yes. You are big I on am. that. Yeah, I am. Oh, I think why not? Next We're going to get to 19 teams. I, I did some numbers, actually. People do know that we did have a top four, and then we had a top five, and then we went to a top six. You know, we had a top eight with 16 teams before the two interstate. Like, everyone goes, oh, you're, you're accepting mediocrity if you have a wildcard weekend. Well, we had a top eight when there was only 16 teams. Yeah. And then there were 17 teams for a, a while. Um, with with a top eight, so I mean, it's about that's about right now. That we're going to get a Tassie team in. Um, I like the idea of the weekend. I think it just keeps teams alive that are down the bottom um, a bit more, and and then we have some footy on the weekend off. If they don't bring in the wild card weekend, do you want the pre finals buy to stay or a pre grand final? No, I like pre grand final. Pre-grand yeah, final. I think the grand final have the buy then. Get yeah, everyone get fresh everyone. for the granny. Yeah, and then yeah. have the brown though. Would you rather actually have the brown though? You know how they've got that pre week buy before uh, before finals. Wouldn't it be good to have the Brownlow then? So then even if the Brownlow medals was playing, like they can always pump them up the whole finals rather than just that last week. It makes sense to have it all then. Yeah, if you're going to have that week off, have all the awards then. Play, it would suit the players because they're all still in town yeah. before they can then go away on their holidays. For sure. Um, I think so, but it's tradition, mate. We still try and keep some tradition in the game. 100%. Uh, do you reckon the Saints have their Nat Fife yet? So when Ross went to Freo... He got a list ready to go. They can always defend. And then Fife took him to the prelims in the grand final. I know yeah. they didn't win it. Who can be the Fife at the Saints? Or what's Ross looking for? Who's the A grade? Yeah, no, nah, that's the big question. They, they don't have it yet. They still need a lot more talent, particularly in that midfield. Yeah. Um, if you look at all the great teams, the ones that are playing finals now, you're basically loaded in the midfield. Like, you've got to be able to compete with Butters and Rosie and Francis and the Frio midfield and Carlton. So, St Kilda don't have that. Um Philippo, they're trying to turn into a Fife. Is he going to be that? I don't know yet. I'm yeah. still not, not 100% convinced, even though he, he finished the year strong. Um, they've got some work to do in that space. That's why I think Finn Callahan is probably one they'll throw the kitchen Local sink boy. at. Yeah, or is that and why try that Jack back. Merritt story came out this week? They're like, we're going to give him whatever he wants, however much money he wants. Yeah, that, 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 that's Zach that, Merritt's story. I mean, if, if his manager's just sort of asked a question, you know, yeah. and, and a club sort of says, yes, we are. It's yeah, that's pretty common for a for a club. If, if you ring a club and say, "Are you interested in X?" Clubs will say yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. doesn't mean that's going to happen. Yeah, so yeah, um, yeah. yeah, no, I don't think the Zach Merritt story has much legs. Now we've been massive on the smalls all year. We've got our smalls yeah. t-shirt. We know you're big on the smalls. Now I just want to know with how the game is evolving and how do you think more clubs are going to adopt the small style of play? You saw on the weekend the Wiz got to play one out of the queue for a little bit. Willie Rioli. Do you reckon more teams are going to start to be doing that, or you reckon a lot of teams still have their own structures? No, I do. I think we are a copy cat league and, and I think it is coming that, that those small half forwards and, and forwards are going to be more important so I think the Giants are ahead of the game they've already been drafting those sort of yeah. those yeah. forwards um, Hawthorne have now gone away and done that um, Brisbane have been able to win a lot of games off the back of the smalls as well so I think it is important I think you need to have really high quality three or four half forward smalls that can hit the scoreboard but also pressure It's all they're also important to yeah. start your team defence that's where your team defence starts with the smalls so I wouldn't be surprised particularly with this draft and uh, and some trades that clubs will be looking to try and load up in that area Were you in on the whiz going pick five or you Leaning out, we thought you can't drive small forward. No, I did. We love so I do a bit of work at the Fremantle Dockers in their recruiting team. So they used to call him the little champ. They were, they were loving him. Right. Like, and I was watching him from, from some vision of him since he was seventeen. Yeah. So I was warning people, saying, "Mate, we're going to have the number one draft." I was calling him the number one draft pick at that stage, saying, "And he's going to be like one hundred and sixty centimeters." And people yeah, were like, "What are you going right. now? Wait till you see, wait till you see the whiz play." And um, he had a bit of a slow start, but to be honest, what he's doing. 
what he did as an 18 year old small forward. Yeah, I don't think there's been any small forward at, at that age to have as much impact as he did that end no of the way. season. So it's scary what he's going to be in another couple of years. After he kicked the two in a minute the other night and he was one out in the square in a final, it's just unbelievable uh, as an 18 year old. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, so I just want to ask, so with the theatrics that Jack Ginevan brings, are you a fan of it? And do you think that this is where the game is heading, more the WWE style promo? Because I'm a massive fan of it. Whether you like him or not, you're tuning in to watch the Hawks. Like, are you tuning in to watch Matt Rowell and the Suns? Yeah. Like, yes, yes, he's a good player, he's inside, but whether for, and like, everyone's like, yeah, I get you, like, the Hawks are going to try and tell him to stop, but tell that to their memberships, tell that to all their merchandise. They're making money on money with this. Like, I guarantee that they love it. Do you enjoy that part of the game? Well, as a neutral and as a footy lover, I for do. For sure. But I've got no, I've got no, no fight in the dog. Like, I don't, I don't care if, yeah. if it comes back to bite them on the ass or if it works for them, because I just love it as a neutral. But I can see from a club point of view that there is a fine line because as we saw what happened that, you know, Port Adelaide did use it, whether people agree with it or not, they did use it um, to their advantage and, and motivate them. And, and then obviously there was some backlash. And I just worry, I worry in Australia, we have tall poppy syndrome. We, whenever someone puts themselves out there, we try and shoot them down. We're not like America. We don't celebrate it enough. So while there were people celebrating, I reckon Jack Ginevan while they were winning, I think people were still waiting to, to chop his head off as yeah. soon as it didn't work out. I just, unfortunately, I just think that's a bit of um, the way we are here. So um, we all like it. I love but it. But I don't think there's going to be too many to stick their neck out and mm. do what he did. But hopefully he keeps it up. But I'm worried off the back of what's happened this year and what happened with Collingwood. They just, they try and temper him a I little bit. I just find it funny. They're like, oh, I gave him motivation. If you're not motivated to win a home qualifying final, like it's. Yeah, I, I will say though, but th that's a bit of a myth because coaches every single week, every single year use some sort of something to motivate a playing group, whether they tell a story, whether they use an analogy, whether they, um, you know, you know, Luke, Lee, Luke Beveridge would use song quotes or coaches every week try and find a theme. Yeah. To, it's not to say this is the reason you're going to win, but it's just to, to get your arousal levels up to the, to the right level to be able to perform or to motivate you or to, to give you a bit of purpose. That's yeah. what coaches do. There's yeah. two elements to coaching. There's the motivation and then there's the, the tactical side of things. And if you're a coach that's got both. Um, so they use anything. And in this situation, they had something that was basically given to them on a platter to use. Um, so Ken Hinkley took advantage of that. Going off that, would you? I'd like the Suns to come out next year and go. Matt Rouse winning the Brownlow, Ben Kings winning the Coleman, and we are winning our first final next year. Come and watch us. Would you rather that or them just stay quiet and go about the business? Because I'm sick of them being good just for being about nothing. Being nothing. They're Could watchable for the first ten weeks and they just fall off. Can I put this to you, right? Because I had someone in the in the media make this point to me, and I thought it's a really good point. Why do you really want Gold Coast to be so good? So Collingwood aren't good, probably. But that's but that's a good and question, right? As a neutral, because what I'm getting at is everyone's saying, oh, what, Gold Coast have got to make the eight. Gold Coast have got to play finals. But if they do, they're going to make finals at the expense of uh, yeah. a Collingwood or a Carlton yeah. or an Essendon or teams that we sort of, the big Melbourne teams. Yeah. And so it's sort of like, we, if we're going to get the finals and it's a Gold Coast v... Port Adelaide, hypothetically, are we going to be like, oh, oh it would have been good to see Collingwood play yeah, Port Adelaide? No, you're right. So there is an interesting one that we all want them to go well, but then you sort of like, sometimes yeah. there are just teams in any sport, and you think about if you follow the EPL or the NFL or NBA, there's always teams that are just pretty, just average teams just average to make up the numbers. And yeah. Yeah, they're sort of harmless. I, I get what you're saying. I, I would like to see Gold Coast. I think they will make it. I think yeah, they'll, they'll get there. I think they'll get there under under Damien Harwick, whether it's next year or the year after. Can Dimmer 100% coach? Or is he just gifted one of the top three players we've ever seen? Yeah, it's always a great argument, isn't it? Coaching, like, coaching v having the talent on your list. How no. many, how many years, if Dimmer doesn't, they don't play finals this year and the next, when is it a hot seat? Uh, he needs, yeah, he's got to be doing it within three years. Yeah. yeah. Which Adam Kingsley's been able to do, probably with a, a, a list that's probably more advanced than the Giants, but Hardwick will get there. I think he's got the right system. He's got the right method. He's just trying to instill it in that playing group. I think they'll, they'll make it. Uh, so I just want to know, obviously you're involved with Frio and obviously playing at St Kilda. I just want to know, Ross Lyon, I believe he said that St Kilda contact hours at the club is like 16 to 18 mm. hours. I just like to think well, with our players that – in any spare time there, they're watching film, massage, extra weight sessions. Like, they're getting paid enough for it. Is that actually what it's like? I guess every club's different. We hear Geelong, it's like the best culture. They can sort of go in a bit of a trust system as long as they're winning, they're doing their own stuff. But is that actually the contact there? Because I find it unbelievable. Yeah, nah. Like, where I work that amount of hours, like, what they're getting paid... Yeah. It's just mind blowing. No, to me. It, it is pretty scary, and it does feel like it's heading that way. I mean, you talk about Geelong's culture, but that's what Geelong do. They get in at ten and leave at two. Yeah, you know. But because they're an experienced group and it's worked for them, um, other teams try and copy it. It is true they don't do as much. And I'm, I'm one. As I said, I'm a footy head and, and live and breathe it. I'm surprised there are so many players that actually don't even watch watch footy. Yeah. Don't even really you know get caught up in 
deep vision and um, and all those sorts of things. And they're just there. They play. They clock on. They clock off. It actually there is an element of that. There, it's obviously different for every player. But um, yeah, the hours they do are nowhere near as, as much as they used to be. I hear stories at how hard Caleb Sarong and Andrew Brayshaw train. Were you guys, did you guys used to train like all the extra hours? Yeah, we always did. And you, you learn at different speeds about when to become an actual pro. I remember as a kid, we were doing a bike session, um, stationary bike, and Nick Del Santa and I, and we're like thinking we're pumping as hard as we can. And we're like, whoa, that's hard. And then we looked at like Robert Harvey, who was the older player, and like his bike was like in a pool of sweat <laughs> on the floor. And you're like, oh shit, that's like what hard that's work looks like. Because yeah, in your head, yeah. you think you're working hard, and then you see it, what a pro does. So everyone learns at a different rate. But um, yeah, we always pushed each other hard, and, and we had. We had some things off field that we did that just sort of mentally got us to the point where we were ready to play every week. So yeah. we had some traditions that every Friday night at 5.30 in the middle of winter, we all met at St Kilda Sea Bars and we'd go out in the, into yeah. the ocean and jump in the hot, hot tub. Didn't matter what how windy it was, the waves were crashing. It was just we had to do it. Otherwise, we felt like we'd taken a shortcut. So there are all those, all those things like that that, that everyone that. goes through. Do you want to go? I, I got I to gotta float my Cullen Ward take to him in the, the elimination file. No, it was a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. You're an NFL fan? Yep. So, you know, sometimes, this so is awesome. time score situation. Yep. Sometimes killing clock in NFL is actually better than scoring. Yep. You don't want to give the ball back. Yep. I got a theory. Callum Ward breaks that tackle and kicks that goal to put the Giants yep. 14 points up. Sitting on the bench was Isaac Heaney, Tom Papley, Callum Mills, Brody Grundy. He kicks that goal, puts them 14 points up. They all come on the field and just kick the next three goals and win the game. Would it have been better for Callum Ward <laughs> to kick a point there, get another stoppage, or just kill more clock? Go! I went and rewatched. I've rewatched no, it three we, times. We were at the game and we noticed it, but but they'd been standing on the bench for like minutes trying to get on. But yeah. because the play was on the opposite side of the ground and there wasn't any stoppage, they couldn't get them on. And we actually made comment and said the same thing: this yeah. goal now allows Sydney to get yeah, their three he, stars he, back on. If he got tackled, tw- well, I think in that situation to you've go. still got to or you've still got to take the goal. You've yeah. still got to take the points lead and then back yourself in to hold. Will on. we ever get that advance where it's like? Nah, it's more well, looking who's it, on the looking bench. who's on the bench. It's more like time score situation. We're just going to keep this in our forward fifty, or they're too good at going slingshot these days. Nah, I don't think too much system. Like, yeah, I, I love the thought. I love the theory. You know, I got in trouble one day doing something similar. We were playing a game. I was playing for St Kilda <laughs> late in my career against Brisbane, and it was midway through the last quarter, and we were like two or three goals up, and I got a handball receive, and I ran into the goal square, and there was no one around me, so I literally stopped for like eight seconds and just bounced it and waited yeah. for someone to come because I was just trying to kill some time. And um, I kicked the goal, and they crossed to Alan Richardson in the coach's box, and he's off his head going, what the fuck are you doing? And he gave me a spray thinking that I was being arrogant or being yeah. like I'm a smart ass, and I was actually trying to say to him, I was just milking 10 seconds. Yeah. Like if I'd have taken the mark, I would yeah. have taken my full 30. Yep, yep. I was just trying to take 10 seconds off the clock, and Rich I didn't see it that way, and um, that sort of made some headlines. <laughs> and I was been, Yeah, that was being a smart ass, but I like the thought process. I'm not sure it'll happen. I love the take initially. Yeah. Um, look, not trying to blow your own trumpet here, but we do think you're one of the best play-by-play callers. Is commentary one thing that you trying to lean into a little bit more next year? Obviously, Fox Footy are doing their pretty much every game. Yeah. Are you going to be doing a lot more of that next year? And like maybe less media stuff? I'm not sure whether you're allowed to say. No, I don't know, to be honest. I've got no idea. Really? No, I don't know what it looks like. When, uh, Fox don't really know what it'll look like yet, next year yet in regards to how we structure yeah, right. up the, the games and um, the telecast and um, the analysis and all that sort of stuff. Do you so, love it though? Yeah, I do. And, and I like having a balance of doing everything. I like calling play by play and I think it's a point of difference that, will, that hopefully can keep me in the industry. Sometimes I like doing the specials um, and then – the, the analysis stuff, like the shows and things we do, is the hardest thing I do, putting in all, all the work. But again, it, it sort of gives me a, a point of difference to to have my own show. So I like having a bit of balance, but no doubt I'll have to call some more games considering Fox will do all night. On TV, you put more into than a bit. Triple M, we can get away with And because yeah. you're on radio, if you get a name or two wrong, no one really knows. But <laughs> yeah. TV, you've got to be got to be on your game. So it's probably probably half a day to sort of three quarts of a day of, yeah. of prep um, to be able to get notes on every player, um, notes about you know the games and what it'll mean and, and all those sorts of things. So, um, yeah, that, that takes the most time, which is probably why I wouldn't want to do too many games because yeah. that's, that's a, a, lot sure. of, a lot of work. So I'll, I like having the balance. But no doubt first crack on a Sunday night is the hardest thing I do because I'll do a game, commentate or do specials, and then as soon as the game finishes, the first thing you do is go, okay. fuck, right, what, what, what's the angle that we can take with it? What can we yeah, what can we talk about? You know, yeah. we don't try and do the obvious. We won't just talk about, you know, Jeremy Cameron, if you kick five and show his highlights. We try and delve into the why something happened and, and take people somewhere where they probably wouldn't normally get the analysis. So that's the hardest bit that I do. But again, very lucky to be able to have a show that, that's sort of going pretty well. Are you good at 
like being at a game, watching a game, so you, like it's not on TV, and taking in what's happening and being able to go, oh, I want to watch the tape on that because I saw that happening. In yeah, a way. it's a good one that I, I need to keep honing because my issue is I probably tend to wait for the result to then know where to go. Yeah, because okay. it's no point saying I'm going to look at, I'm going to take something on. Dane Zorko and how poorly he's playing. If yeah. Brisbane end up winning by 10 goals, yeah, you're still yeah. like, well, that doesn't really matter. So um, where Kingy's probably got a better ability to in-game spot something and go, I'm going to use that and then sort of make it fit. Yeah. doesn't matter the result. Yeah. So, I, But I'm probably a bit different. So I'll end up watching the game, keep some ideas in my head about where I'm depending yeah. on which team wins and then go back and, and try and sort of find some numbers or vision to, to back that up. Oh, yeah. I was gonna say, if you're the coach of Tassie and you're building a side, I just want to know, say you're drafting a team, how would you like them to play? Like, say, Melbourne were contest defence. We know the Hawks have played small ball. Carlton, before we turned to mm. shit, we were, like, really strong in the stoppage and clearance. Pretty much, like, how do you see the game? How would you like to coach a side? Is it, like, that defence side, like, Ross, Ross yeah. Line? Like, what's your philosophy, I suppose, on footy? <sighs> It's easier to say that I'm not coaching, but I think you need to have a, you need to have balance. You've got to be able to score and defend. So you've got to have a strong system um, where you want to attack. You want to be able to – you've got to light up in your midfield first. I think it all starts with your midfield. So you go midfield first. Light up in the midfield, yep. stack your talent, um, because if you can win clearance or win sort of control through the midfield, you can then dictate a bit of the game. You yep. can play it in your forward half. You can – you can do some things there. But I think you want to be able to attack off half back and run. I like the Giants model, yep. you know, that style where you've got to embrace turnover. You can't be trying to be mm-hmm. too pretty because in finals time it becomes a bit of chaos. Um, it's a good question. I want, be, I, want be, I want to be a good ground ball contest team. So yep. Hawthorne have mastered that. They're their ground ball. And probably what Geelong have done with they've changed their game. So they went from being that sort of uncontested mark team. Now they just embrace just contest. Get some run, though. kick the contest, get your numbers there. And that way you can, if you win the footy, you're in great position, but you can also, if you lose it, you're in good shape to defend. Yeah. So I think I would embrace kick the contest, get a lot of smalls in my team that can nice. run, get from contest to contest, and that's where you get your pressure. You get your pressure yeah. around, around the source. I want to stay in media. Who's rocked up with the biggest hangover in Sunday rub history? It's either between Duck and Stevie J. I've heard a couple of Sundays and they are dusty. So Duck was the best at it. Duck mastered the art of coming in, not watching the footy too much and having a big <laughs> night and um, being, able to talk, being able to talk about what he, what he was seeing. And yeah, he was good. But uh, Stevie, yeah, he's had a couple, but he's coached. So he's, he's, he's a bit been behaving himself. Yeah. Now, we don't have it here. Morgs will be able to edit in. Do you remember the infamous video so of us? We're in Gather Round. Yep. So I put... Held I up do. the sign for the multi. Look over. I was like, Kingy, Kingy sort of gave us nothing. You're just gone over. All good. I like the multi. I remember looking at it going, I think that'll get up. But it didn't work, did it? You missed out on something, yeah, I reckon. Uh, oh, Clayton, Oliver, yeah. Clayton Oliver, yeah. Clayton Oliver, yeah. yeah, yeah there yeah, it is. Stinker. I thought at the time. Your face is so good. You just. The, Sum it up. Is it, yeah, Rory Laird, Rankin, yeah. Bailey Fritch. Yeah, yeah, I, was, yeah. I was reading it. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah, <laughs> is the future of Australian media media going to look more and more like the American model in like so Colin Coward's on TV for mm. three hours a day just talking sports you know Pat McAfee goes live every day are we ever going to see something like that first things first it's a debate show Stephen A. Smith he just gets on a debate is there a marker would you, do we not have enough population not, not enough people watching the game I would like to think we do you know, if yeah. we've got a, a 24 hour footy channel just where we have just content all day, just different 100%. different media just coming on in different formats, um, even if they're debating, you know, like we couldn't get enough of everyone had an opinion on Ken Hinckley and whether you liked it or didn't like it. It didn't matter that we'd heard it 10 yeah. times, everyone still had their take. Uh, I would like to think we get more and more. Um, I don't know what it looks like, the media landscape. I sort of find it hard to, to see what it looks like. I just do what I'm told. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think so. Oh, maybe there would be more. Instead of long form, there might be more short form stuff. Yeah. You know, like a little ten minute video where you can watch, you know, an analysis from say King and I on just Collingwood. Yeah. Or more yeah. snapshot things that the small bites, which I think they think the way that people consume media now, it's a bit more consume it in small doses. You yeah. Know. Um maybe something like that, but I'm only guessing. Uh I've only got a couple more. If Tazzy had the nineteenth license, who do you think would be the twentieth or who would you like to see? Where do you reckon would work the best? Would it be a third Adelaide side, maybe a third side over in Perth, Northern Territory? Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm all for the top end if they can make it work. I heard Nathan Buckley, who's he's on that um, sort of like on the committee that's doing the the analysis on whether it works, and he sounded pretty bullish. Like there's going to be a fair bit to go into it, but if you could somehow take the whole top end and you know maybe that like sort of North Queensland into it or something like that, and, and have a twentieth team up there, 
um, in like maybe an air-conditioned stadium or something just, like that. I just, or I just feel it would be a hard pitch for players. Like they go there for two years and say, like, I want to come home. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it, uh, I think we could try and make. If you it had work. a good team there, that'd be a fortress there. Well, that's right, and I'm, what you would do is you'd heavily invest in the indigenous because we need more indigenous players. I mean, they are they are the stars of the show. They're the freaks. We need to in, invest more in some indigenous talent. So you could it could almost have the you know the indigenous all, pathways, and play, you know, yeah. they, if, imagine if a team you know. Not that the whole team would be, but if you had a team that had 10, 12, 15 Indigenous players in the one side, that'd my God, awesome. it'd be so much fun to watch. That'd be awesome. So maybe we get to that point where we, we go down that path, but um, yeah, it's probably still a fair way off. Oh, we got some uh, questions from our followers that DM'd us. Best Ross Lyon spray. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got, got yeah, yeah, oh, I got a good one one day. Dal, Dal and I got one. We seem to get lumped in together a lot. Nick Dal Santa and I got a good one at the SCG one day playing against the Swans. Always hard to get a kick against that Sydney team, Kieran Jack and all those blokes at the SCG, and we weren't getting a touch in the midfield. We were getting beaten, and Ross Lyon gave Dal and I an almighty, almighty spray, ripped into us and teed off on us for not defending and fuck, all this. And then as we're about to run out for the team, he goes, you know what? Fuck it. And he gets mine and Dell's magnets, puts us in the back line, <laughs> and he gets Gilbert and Fisher and puts them on board. And he goes, you know what? You two can go and play in defence and learn what it's like to fucking defend. <laughs> so he puts us in the back line. I was getting tagged by Kieran Jack that day. So we go out to start the third quarter. We both go into the back line. My man, Jared Moore, was – I saw in the end I got my played on Jared Moore. He was only the smallest bloke in the forward line. He got a message from the runner – Straight away saying, well, stay in the goal square and don't move. We're happy to have Montagna at full back. So, so my opponent, Jared Moore, stood in the goal square for the whole <laughs> second half and I didn't move. Nick Del Sando went and played on Jared McVeigh starting at half forward. McVeigh kicked two goals on him in five minutes. Oh, no. They got Del straight out of the back line <laughs> and put him back on ball. And I got stuck playing at full back yeah. and literally didn't touch it. And that was the famous week the next week where Ross Lyon dropped Milne and Del Sando. Um, from the team, and I sort of, I, I sort of hung on a little bit because um, my body had worked over the previous few weeks had been a bit better. But that was the famous week. Yeah, they got dropped, and in two thousand and eight, and then off the back of that was the turning point. And I think we went on to win whatever it was, forty five their next fifty something games. Guys, man, a good run. Yeah. Will the Saints win a granny before? The West Coast Eagles in North Melbourne. <laughs> How do we know? How do you know? How do you know? How do you know? How do you know that? I'd like to think so, but um, I, I, to be honest, I'm a big, I'm a big believer in North Melbourne. I. If they can get all their off-field stuff right and, and get the culture right, they're, they're, they're stacked with talent. Well, to be honest, they should be ahead of St Kilda with what they've got in regards to top-end talent. Um, yeah, it'll come for them. It'll come quick. I, yeah, I reckon North are going to finish higher than Collingwood next year. Ooh. It's how big it, I, reckon they're, I reckon Nick Dacos covers up that many cracks. Yeah, but the problem is Nick Dacos can take them a long way. Yeah, I, they're but, hanging on to some 30-year-olds. Yeah. Like That's my hot take going in yeah, next year. Yeah, I don't mind it. I don't mind I, it. Uh, maybe it's I'm a bit off him, but I don't reckon Craig McRae will coach Collingwood the next final win. Okay, good one. Cover hot takes. Yeah, good. Yeah, no, 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 just let love him shoot. Right, so if you're the coach of Tassie, you could draft anyone. So any current player and any past player of all time, two players. Who are you drafting? King. He said, "What do you say, Ben Cousins and ben, Charlie Kerno? Oh, Charlie Kerno, so Ben Cousins. He's like he was just a freak. Yeah, he was. It's hard to go past Duck. You got to build your team around mm. Duck." You get people to, the, to get that. people to the footy. Um, right now, I, no, I'd take Nick Dacos if I'm Tassie. If you go, if you send me everyone line up against the wall, who you're taking? Yeah, I'm taking Nick. Nick Dacos. Yeah, and the yeah, duck. yeah. yeah. I had one more question. I can't remember it. <laughs> he's, he's still torn Holy up by 2020. Yeah, I am. I really so, am. Thanks for joining us. That is for you. Oh, beautiful. Mate. Thank so, you very much. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Um, hopefully. Yeah, we'd love to get you on maybe like a pre-season. Like, we'd love to talk to anyone. We yep. just love talking footy. <laughs> yep. Really appreciate your time. It's been awesome to have you. Thank you so much for You're coming. Right. You're lucky I'm a footy head. Happy to chat footy. We'll do We'll do a pre-season predictions one. Mate, I'd love and it. And then we can look back on it at the end of the year and get you on again. Thank you so much. No worries. Guys, Thank hope you. you guys all enjoyed. Comment, like, subscribe. Mwah. Let's go. Answers are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, call 1-800-858-858 or visit gamblinghelponline.org.au.